Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk in this video about causes of hearing loss. We've looked at hearing loss in general. We've looked at some anatomy and physiology. Let's look at some typical causes of hearing loss. Outer, middle, and inner ears always kept in mind, okay? When you're looking at the outer ear, what is, is the most common cause of outer ear problems? Well, that could be said to be, duh, wax. When you're thinking about earwax, the word for earwax is actually called cerumen, C-E-R-U-M-E-N. And when you think of the word cerumen, think of the word sincere. It means without wax. In ancient Roman times, if you really loved someone, you gave a solid statue of silver. It wasn't filled with wax. I digress. Look at the ear, outer ear canal. Look at where wax begins. On the outer half of the ear canal, not deep inside. This is deep inside. You can see the eardrum here. But when you're looking at the outer half, where hairs grow, especially in men, but the outer half of the ear canal contains glands that produce earwax. Why do you have earwax? Well, it's kind of like having mucus in the nose. It's good for you. It's a lubricant. Also, bugs don't like earwax. <laughs> this is nice, room, nice warm temperature that they would like to go in. But when we use Q-tips, <clears throat> we are jamming wax from the outer part and we're pushing it further in. When you're looking on the inside of the ear canal, you'll notice that there's no wax, no hairs. Wax isn't produced here. Wax is produced on the outer side of the ear canal. Always important to remember that. The doctor was right, <clears throat> excuse me, never put anything in your ear smaller than your elbows. At any rate, the middle ear. Causes of middle ear pathology. Now, middle ear, <clears throat> as you remember, the, the eardrum, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup bones. What's the main middle ear pathology? What's the main thing that goes wrong with the middle ear? It's called otitis media. Now, here's a couple of skulls. You're looking at an adult skull, and you're looking at a baby's skull. What are you seeing here? The adult skull is longer. The baby skull is shorter. What does that mean in terms of kids? Well, here's a child, and look at his, here's his outer ear, middle ear, inner ear, and look at the tube going down to the back of his throat called your eustachian tubes. E-U-S-T-A-C-H-I-A-N, eustachian tubes. Now, these tubes link, link the middle ear space, which is just filled with air, not fluid. Remember, it's only the cochlea that has fluid. The middle ear space is filled with air. It's about the size of a sugar cube. And that room connects to the back of your throat, right where your tonsils are. Now, when children get tonsillitis or an ear, an, a throat infection, that infection can more easily crawl up a child's eustachian tube and infect the middle ear. And that's called otitis media. Oto, otoitis, or O-T-O-I-T-I-S. Oto is ear, itis, inflammation. Otitis of the ear, media, middle. Middle ear infections is the most common cause of hearing loss in children. Now, some hearing loss is genetic. Some hearing loss is inherited due to just the, the, the mixing of genes from mom and dad, and who knows, people who have, who have married a little bit closely, who knows, but hearing loss can be inherited. But that's not usually otitis media, that's an infection. Now, some children are more prone to otitis media than other children. I mean, some kids get earaches once in a while. Some kids get it all the time. That can be a genetic predisposition. But another type of genetic predisposition to hearing loss is sensory neural, which I'll get into just a little bit. But let's look at treatment for otitis media. It's often called tubes. Now, you'll see an American penny here, and you'll see a tube. Now, what's done here is the tube is inserted into a child's eardrum. Here's a normal eardrum. 
normal healthy eardrum. A doctor or an audiologist is looking in, you're looking at a normal eardrum. You can see part of the hammer, you can even see part of the, the, the anvil bone through that eardrum. Here's a retracted eardrum. TM means tympanic membrane. Now what happens is when this little tube, and I'll go back and show you here, when you've got a tonsillitis infection, that little tube no longer opens when you swallow. It's swollen shut. You see, this little room constantly is absorbing oxygen. And if no new air can come up into that room when you swallow or yawn or blow your nose, that little room is going to form a vacuum. And that vacuum will be seen as what's called a retracted eardrum. Now it's sucked inward. That's got to hurt. Well, what happens later is the body rebels against that and produces fluid. And now the eardrum begins to bulge because there's fluid. At first, it's non-infectious. It's called serous fluid, S-E-R-O-U-S. It's like a, under a blister. The fluid you got clear, but then later on it becomes infected. Now the child has a real ear infection. Medical treatment is necessary. Often antibiotics are used, but we're growing immune to those, aren't we? Tonsillectomy is often done, removal of tonsils and adenoids to, to prevent that eustachian tube from being swollen shut. And also, sometimes a tube is inserted into the eardrum in order to allow communication of new air so that that middle ear can get fresh air and won't become as infected so often. Inner ear problems, that's hair cell damage. Again, here's the cochlea. The inner ear, remember this whole thing is as big as the tip of your little finger. Solid bone, by the way, they call that the petrous bone. Peter, the rock, it's the hardest bone of the body. Here you've got a, a labyrinth shaped, like an auger shaped hole dug in, filled with fluid, and looking into the triangular areas is gonna show you where those hair cells reside. Here's that triangular area, here's the hair cells. Bringing that closer in, you can see the hair cells and tiny little hairs on top. When those are damaged, you've got sensory neural hearing loss. Sensory, S-E-N-S-O-R, sensory-neural, N-E-U-R-A-L. Long name used to be called nerve damage. Well, this is 95% of hearing loss. Only 5% of hearing loss is earwax and otitis media. 95% of hearing loss is hair cell damage. The main cause is getting better with age, presbycusis. Second main cause, noise-induced hearing loss. Yes, we live in a polluted society. Elderly in Africa have better hearing than elderly in Canada. Why? Less noise pollution there. Well, and another cause of sensory neural loss can be genetic. Maybe the child inherited it from his parents. That can happen. Maybe mother had German measles while she was carrying her baby. That can cause. Maybe the child had measles or the mumps. That can sometimes cause sensory neural loss. So sensory neural loss can have a lot of causes, but in all cases, here's normal hair cells, and you can see the inner hair cells. You can see the outer hair cells. You can even see the shape of the cell underneath the hairs. And that would be normal cells. Here's an inner hair cell. You're looking close. You're looking down at it. In other words, you're taking one of these and you're looking down at it, straight down. And you can see the cell and you can see the little hairs sticking up. Short ones in the front, tall ones in the back. Here's an outer hair cell. This is actually one of these. And we're just looking closely at it. And it's got about a hundred hairs, little tiny things. Normal hair cells, look at the cells, look at the test tube shapes underneath. Normal versus damaged. And notice, when the cell is gone, the hairs or stereocilia is gone. You can't fix that, okay? That is irreparable. 95% of sensory neural or of hearing loss is damage to the inner and outer hair cells. Normal, 
damaged. So I hope this has helped to, to kind of focus on some of the main causes of hearing loss. Remember, outer ear pathology or disorders can often be fixed medically. Middle ear problems can often be fixed medically. Inner ear causes of hearing loss, presbycusis, noise, genetics, other various diseases, but those are <clears throat> less common. The main two are presbycusis and noise-induced hearing loss. Permanent, 95%. Lots can be done about it. Believe you me, we've got another whole series of videos to talk about what we can do about these problems. At any rate, suffice to say, I hope you've enjoyed this little coverage of causes of hearing loss. Cheers. Thanks.